Revolution, author Rich DeMillo, recounts our nation's historic commitment to nurturing colleges and universities and the critical importance of a renewed social contract in support of higher education. One of the things that informs higher education in this country uh, is, is a commitment that was made very early uh, in the nation's history to, to, um, to embracing a new kind of, of university. Uh, it, it's not well known, but it's, it's nevertheless true that, that, that in the first written constitutions associated with the United States, the Constitution of the State of Massachusetts, co-authored, not co-authored, authored completely by, by John Adams as a very young man, um, 10 years before the Constitutional Convention, uh, is this paragraph which talks in very specific terms about the moral responsibility that society has to cherish its academic institutions. And he's not talking about abstract institutions. He's talking about Harvard. Uh, he's talking about, he's talking about um, uh, the um, uh, Williams College. He's, he's talking about the institutions that he was familiar with at the, at the time. And, and the contract, in, in, in Adam's view, is two-sided. Uh, society has, has a moral obligation to, to cherish these institutions. The institutions have also a moral obligation to give back to, to society. That idea crops up over and over again in the 19th century. Uh, it's, it's, one of the, it's one of the, uh, one of the defining char characteristics of the Land Grant Act, act the, the Morrill Act. So at the beginning of the Civil War, you had this, this realization um, that, that the needs of a growing country were very different than the needs uh, of, a, of a, um, a much more moneyed class in, in Europe. It, it, the United States needed engineers, it needed clergymen, it needed lawyers, it needed, it needed doctors. And so grafting onto a classical university the idea that, that you would now promote what they call the mechanical arts, uh, and that would be an equal citizen with, with a classical education was a new concept. But it was very much tied to this notion that, that we have a responsibility to our country uh, to, to run our institutions in, in that way. And you, and you see it repeated uh, over, the, over the decades. The state of Wisconsin, uh, a man named John Bascom, um, articulated uh, in, in, in one of his speeches to a graduating class the idea that it was the duty of the university to reach into every home in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, and so, so for, it was a huge idea. And, and for an entire generation or two, that became the defining uh, moral imperative of public education. Yeah. That's been lost. So, so the, 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 the sad part of the story uh, is, is that that contract stopped being renewed uh, a generation or two ago. Uh, and and the, the moral compass that's, 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 um, that's driven uh, universities, I think, has been, has been wandering ever, uh, ever since. Uh, so as I was completing the book, I got an email from Michael Crow. Um, literally, uh, as I was completing the, the, the last revision of the, uh, of the last version of the manuscript. Um, and he said, I, I, I've, uh, I've reread John, uh, John Adams' beautiful prose, and I've decided that this university, which has never had a charter, should have a charter. Uh, and the charter that he articulated was to assume fundamental uh, social and economic responsibility for the people in the state that the university is supposed to, supposed to serve. A very Bascom-like view of the world, a very Adams-like view of the, uh, of the world. But it encapsulates, I think, in a very nice way what, what, what this style of revolutionary is, is looking at. And, and, and there's, a, there's an epilogue to the book, um, which I, I come back to and, and reread because uh, it, it's not quite apparent to me how all this came together. Um, but, but, but there was a meeting of the people that I, I call revolutionaries, um, literally on the last day that the book uh, existed in manuscript form, um, at the Carnegie uh, Corporation in New York City. So of all places, the Carnegie Corporation, which established the, the, the apparently inviolable hierarchy of research universities and, and, and four-year colleges, uh, in which these people got together and, and kind of uniformly reaffirmed what turned out to be this, this, social, this social contract. 
uh, you know, it was, it was an idea that, that you would define the status of your institution not by who it excluded, by who it included, and how well you did with them, how important your institution was to the people it was supposed to serve, what happened to your students, uh, and, and, and it just, it, it, it's, a, it's a very nice way of looking at, at, at what drives the people that are trying to make change in higher education. They're not driven by uh, kind of commercial um, uh, imperatives of Silicon Valley, which is what reading the newspapers you might be led to believe. Uh, this is a group of people that really are on a crusade, and, and, and they're on a crusade to make to higher education sustainable, meaningful, relevant to, to the United States, and probably to the rest of the world along the way. Rich DeMello sees existential challenges for much of traditional higher education, and at the same time, the need to increase access and affordability through technology. In Revolution, he tells the stories of people and places that are meeting these challenges and beginning to renew the American social contract with higher education.